I now hand the conference over to Ms. Renu Bed from IIFL Securities Limited. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Malika. Very good morning, everyone. Um, on behalf of IIFL Securities, I would like to welcome the management of Compton Greece Consumer Electricals. Uh, today we have with us from the management, Mr. Shantanu Khoshla, Managing Director, Mr. Matthew Job, Executive Director and CEO, Mr. Sandeep Batra, CFO, and Mr. Yashwan Trege, Vice President, Strategy and Financial Planning. Uh, without taking much time, um, I would now hand it over to Shantanu for his opening comments on the 1QSY22 performance. Thank you. Sir. Over to you, Shantanu. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for dialing in to our call for the quarter and the June. First of course, I hope all of you and your family are safe and healthy during the challenging times. Before I touch upon the quarter gone by, I would like to provide a heads up on the safety and well-being of our employees. We have focused on ensuring vaccination for our employees and their families. We have conducted vaccination camps across our factories and office locations all over India. And encouragingly, till date, 89% of our employees have taken at least one dose. We are continuing to drive these camps to ensure our employees and families are completely vaccinated over the next few months. We continue our consistent interactive sessions through town halls and other small group meetings to stay in touch and help alleviate any concerns our employees may be having during these tough times. While overall revenue grew a robust 46% over last year's low base, the quarter, of course, was significantly impacted by the second wave of COVID. Lockdowns and restrictions commenced in April, were severe in May, and gradually began to ease in June. The impact and pace of opening varied by geography. North and West began to open and recover first in June, while the East, and particularly the South, was slower. Even as we speak, areas of the South are still under significant restrictions. While overall, towards the second half of June, the business had largely recovered. Our June 21 revenue as a total company actually grew versus pre-COVID June 19 revenue. Recovery in our major market of the South was slower. Historically, the South contributes to about 35% of our business. But in the quarter past, it was down to 30% as the opening in the South was significantly slower than the rest of the market. As you're all aware, commodity costs continue to rise and give headwinds throughout this quarter. In response, we have taken price rises both in April and May across a large part of our business. However, the pickup through June in demand indicates that these prices are being accepted by the market. Despite record high commodity costs over the last two quarters, we have taken necessary actions which have largely mitigated the impact by a combination of aggressively reducing our cost, pricing actions, and mix improvement. As a result, Material margins have improved by 1.5% sequentially and are almost the same as previous year, same quarter. Our cost savings program, UNATI, continues to deliver desired results, saving 38 crores even in this relatively truncated quarter. Additionally, we have increasingly used advance or pre booking of select commodities through the quarter to protect against ongoing commodity inflation and to secure raw materials where there is or expected to be some scarcity. Last year, given the unknowns and uncertainty of COVID-1, we had postponed or delayed several key investment programs, which we then restarted through the fiscal. Given our learnings, this year we chose to continue these investments during quarter one despite the fact that we were well aware that there would be a potential demand impact of COVID-2. This was based on the strong belief that this was the right thing to do for the business and would enable the business to emerge stronger as we emerge from the COVID situation. Hence, in this quarter, unlike the previous year, we continued our investments in advertising, our rural program, e-commerce, new business development, R&D, and our long-term sourcing plan. While these expenses were obviously higher than Q1 last year where we had held back, 
they are very much in line with the investment levels of Q3 and Q4 of last year. Also, given the learnings of COVID-1 last year and the supply challenges faced as the markets opened up, we consciously took a decision to build inventory over the quarter. This was to ensure that we had uninterrupted supply as market opened up, especially given the global supply shortages of certain materials like chips. <coughs> Excuse me. We are seeing the benefit of this through end June and the beginning of July as markets and demand are normalizing. Additionally, given the continued situation on some key commodities and expected inflation, we have locked in supply at lower prices of certain key raw materials by advanced contracts for future quarters. Both these steps, we believe, will prove beneficial as we move ahead. Despite lockdowns announced across India, we didn't face much disruption this year in our manufacturing activities. All our factories, Baroda, Baddi, Kundayam, Amlad Nagar, are up and running. In the month of May, with curfews and strict lockdown imposed in many parts of India, demand and distribution channels were affected. We aligned our manufacturing activities to the market demand and, as mentioned earlier, ramped up production a little to ensure we were well covered in terms of inventory and supply as the markets are opening up. Obviously, norms of safety laid down by governments and social distancing continue to be strictly adhered to in all our locations. Our focus in terms of our long-term strategies and investments continues to stay the same as we see it giving sustained positive results. On our go-to-market initiatives, we have continued to focus on improving reach. We have made continuous efforts to improve the number of retail points where our products are available. Our efforts are clearly visible in improved reach with rolling 12 months up till April 2021 of our overall fans portfolio, reach growing by 4.7 points. We have continued to improve our secondary sales tracking by information ga gathered from our tally pack system that has enabled us to make more informed decisions and helped to plan our activities to focus on efficiency and growth of the business. We continue to track 80% of our secondary sales through this quarter. We have also, as talked before, continued to invest and focus on alternate channels. Our strong capability building and dedicated efforts continue to harness the potential of the rural channel, which is delivering outstanding results. Our rural sales delivered exponential growth of 195% in Q1. We continue to gain share in this market, and rural channels' contribution to overall sales has increased by 1.6 points. Our second key focus is e in e-commerce along with meaningful consumer engagement in this channel, and this has helped us deliver a growth of 149% in the quarter past in e-commerce and modern retail. We are delivering consistent market share growth in this channel. This channel's contribution to overall sales has increased by 1.8 percentage points. Our focus on driving premiumization which has been a consistent strategy of ours over the last few years, has helped ensure the saliency of the business improves over time. The performance of our top-end range of fans has clearly highlighted the importance of this choice. Our premium and deco fan segment grew by 122% in quarter one over the same period last year. Super premium fans volume has increased by 258% in the quarter. Our focus on consumer-centric product innovation, the key to be a leader in the market is to keep developing products that are meaningful to the consumers, futuristic in design and application. Our continued investment in R&D has enabled us to introduce consumer meaningful products, which has contributed to increasing market share. Despite the disruptions due to the second wave of COVID, we continue to innovate and launch new products. For example, in fans, we introduce Aura, Shore Breeze, in appliances, Diva and Gleamer mixer grinder, in pumps, 
rain extension and pressure boosting series, rain extension of compressor pumps to so low yield and high depth water sources. In lighting, we introduced laser neo colors, trim linear, trim line in indoor commercial. Brand building stays our committed focus area and this, this quarter we invested 21 crores in advertising versus just a crore in the same quarter previous year. All this being said, with the easing of restrictions in June as compared to May, the overall demand outlook has improved, which is reflected in the business of all our performances. However, we continue to face commodity headwinds in terms of unprecedented increase in commodity prices in a short span of time. Commodity costs continue to grow throughout the whole of the quarter. We do see some stabilization in prices, However, it's too early to comment as to whether this is likely to continue as a trend or the trend may continue upwards. We are monitoring the situation closely and have taken, as mentioned earlier, strong mitigating actions in terms of pricing, improved mix, and accelerated cost-saving initiatives to ensure that we recover our material margins and keep the inherent structural profitability of our business. Of course, like you're all aware, we are experiencing a fall in COVID infection counts since early June. However, various institutions and researchers have predicted the possibility of a third wave. While of course we hope that this third wave will be mild or in the best case not happen at all, we monitor the situation closely and given our learnings over the last two waves of COVID, we uh, feel confident that we can manage even if we get a third wave of COVID. Of course, as things stand, assuming there is no significant third wave, we see our business continuing to normalize and demand continuing to pick up as we enter quarter two. On ECD, our fans business grew 63% on the back of strong performance across the entire range and product portfolio. As mentioned earlier, the growth was particularly visible on premium and premium decorative and super premium fans. Our range of new offerings of the last couple of months continues to be well received in the market. On the rolling 12 month basis, we have gained one point of market share in the overall fans business and continue to expand our leadership position. Overall pumps witnessed a 17% growth on the back of strong performance by residential pumps, which grew 26%. Our pumps growth was impacted by a slower opening of the Eastern region, which is a key pumps market for us. Appliance continues its outstanding breakthrough performance, backed by a superior product portfolio and range of offerings, and delivered a growth of 99%. The growth was driven by geysers, a value growth of an outstanding 205%, air coolers, a growth of 90%, irons, growth of 55%. Within a very short span of time, the appliance business has continued exponential growth trajectory, demonstrating our investment in our superior product portfolio, advertising, and go-to-market is paying off to build this as a strong fourth leg of our business. Lighting revenues were at 166 crores and standalone delivered a growth of 39% versus year ago. Importantly, the B2C lighting business continues its volume growth trajectory backed by commensurate volume growth. The B2C LED business grew 48%. We remain confident of robust growth in the B2C business and a gradual improvement in activity in the B2B business. Revival, however, in the B2B demand would be key for the overall growth of lighting moving forward. Importantly, even though it was a COVID-hampered quarter, lighting EBIT continued to be above double digits. We are now seeing clear signs that the pricing on the B2C business has stabilized. Our structural gross margins on lighting are strong and we see the structural profitability of our business and frankly, the entire B2C lighting business 
now being extremely attractive and are confident that we will sustain double digit margins in this category. Finally, the numbers, the board of directors at its meeting held on 23rd July approved the quarterly results of the com company for the quarter. Total income for the quarter was 1,050 crores. ECD revenue stood at 884 crores, EBIT margin at 17.6%, lighting revenues at 166 crores, EBIT margin at 10.7%. Material margin stood at 32.4%. PBT was at 127 crores versus 101 crores last year. PBT margin stood at 12.1%. After tax profit was 95 crores and grew by 27% year on year. I would now stop here and uh, be, we'd be happy to address any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Ladies and gentlemen, please limit your questions to two per participant. If you have a follow-up question, would request you to rejoin the queue. The first question is from the line of Venu Gopal Gare from Bernstein. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity. So my first question is more uh, to get a sense on the demand recovery. You did mention that you know things started to improve quite a bit from June. How different is the pace of recovery that you're seeing at this juncture compared to what it was post COVID wave one? Uh, more importantly, in terms of difference, in terms of nature of recovery across categories and price points maybe. And the other thing within that is that from a working capital standpoint as well, while you have clearly indicated that the operating cash impact we've seen is because of the commodity related actions you've taken, is uh, is there anything else in the market in terms of you know the terms of trade changing that we should be aware of? More importantly, the idea is to figure out when you get back to a positive OCS. That's my first question. And my second one, probably I'll just ask that as well, is why has lighting uh, segment seen a, uh, a disproportionate impact of margins compared to ECD? Uh, so that's that's it from my side. Okay, uh, let, let me try and take them. I hope I remember all the parts, question, the sub parts of the question. Uh, first is uh, how do we see the recovery as contrasted to last year? Uh, we see the recovery having happened this year a little faster than last year, you know, maybe two, three weeks, maximum a month if you compare. Because largely, apart from some pockets in the south, by the end of June, it was kind of normal, like I indicated. We also see the recovery a bit smoother. Last year was a, a huge sharp collapse and then a sharper lift up in recovery, which you know some people may, may have attributed to pent up demand and things like this. This year we see that as smoother, because maybe because of the fact that uh, all shops were not closed all the time uh, post May. So a little quicker and a little smoother, both on the down and also on the up. Right, uh, that was one question. The second was uh, on working working capital. The the real difference, and Sandeep, correct me if uh, there's anything to add. The the primary difference in working capital was because of the two factors which I mentioned, as building up inventory specifically uh, to meet the demand as it opened up, and also in recognition of the fact that some key materials are still in short supply like chips, et cetera. And the second is uh, locking in of advanced contracts for commodity purchases in the current quarter that we're in. There was no other significant change or adjustment in you know, the other areas of working capital, be that uh, payables, receivables, and uh, credit and all that. That was pretty much exactly the same. It was really these two factors. The uh, 
third question was why lighting margins have contracted. Okay. Now, if you look at lighting in terms of uh, the margins, if you look at the margin on a gross margin level, material margin, which really represents the structural profitability, then you will see that we have recovered that. There is no real significant decline if in uh, at the gross margin level. The the difference is simply because of the scale. And the top line, obviously, for everything came down uh, from what it would have been normally in a normal quarter because we lost the month of May. So it's more impact of costs, which, like I mentioned earlier, we chose not to freeze because it was right for the business. But the structural profitability is uh, absolutely fine and recovered in spite of the commodity cost increase. What that implies and this is not just for lighting, but our overall business. As we move forward and as the quarters ahead, the top line normalizes like we're seeing in the back half of June. These costs will in absolutes remain the same, but in terms of percent, we'll obviously come back to what they were in Q3, Q4 levels of last year. Yep, got it, got it. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mayur Patel from IFL Asset Management Company. Please go ahead. Well, uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, you partly answered it, but uh, the commodity you said you have tied up contracts in advance. Uh, has it, uh, you know, benefited the company in this quarter itself, which is showing a very impressive 150 bits uh, gross margin expansion QoQ as compared to you know the year of commodity hitting margins, gross margins in this quarter? Or is there anything else in terms of mix or any other factor which has helped in this quarter to expand gross margins 150 bits Q of you? Yeah. So actually, if you look at uh, the Q1 this year versus quarter four, the commodity on an average has increased by almost 10%. Uh, but if you see that, you know, on ECD, where obviously the, the impact of this commodity push is, is a maximum, sequentially we have almost held our, our gross margin compared to last quarter. I'm talking at a gross margin level. Uh, I think that has happened definitely because of a host of actions. Uh, definitely pricing, as Shantanu explained, we have passed on um, two rounds of pricing in the quarter. Uh, we have uh, the mixed performance has been very strong. Just to give you perspective, for example, in the you know, or in, in the same quarter last year, you know, our mix of premium uh, fans, for example, was down at 11%. But this quarter, we managed to keep that at 16 to 17%, which is what it was even pre-pandemic. So I think mix definitely. Third, commodity-related action, you know, what we mentioned in terms of advanced booking of contracts, locking in rates, have also had some impact during the quarter. Uh, while some of the impact will also be available in the next quarter, but we did get a significant impact of that also during the quarter, which is why we managed, I think, through a combination of uh, pricing, a mixed action, and commodity-related actions. That is how we have managed to pretty much you know, keep our margins during this quarter, in spite of a 10% uh, commodity inflation. Yeah, uh, and, and just one more, one more thing uh, specifically. Uh, we have... Uh, taken out advanced contracts where we've locked the price of our commodities for for this future quarter to the tune of about 50, 50 crores. So that is uh, locking in, locking out. The extent of the benefit, of course, will depend on how much commodities really go up, but we've locked them in for the future. Sure. So there's one more question, if I can squeeze in. Uh, like uh, Venugopal asked, uh, you know, if we compare the previous year post COVID, we have seen we did see very sharp improvement sequentially in the subsequent two three quarters. Uh, this time around, like you mentioned, you are well prepared. You have also invested. You didn't shy away from spending on advertisement and uh, promotion expenses in this quarter, despite a much lower top line in this quarter and a much larger inventory or an overall preparation. Is it fair to say directionally, not asking for any numbers? Directionally, next, you know, sequential three, two, three quarters, the trend could would be better than what the sequential improvement uh, we saw in the previous uh, year post COVID. That's uh, obviously very difficult for us to uh, 
forecast because we have to see how uh, it improves. But clearly, we have seen, um, like I said, May, were, May the markets are almost closed. Through June, we saw a gradual picking up. June has come uh, slightly higher than June 19, which is before COVID-1. Right, so and this this uh, improvement trend continues, and we do expect an improving trend over the few over the quarter to come. Now, exactly how it will look versus last year, we will have to trend-wise, we will have to see because of um, you know these things like when will opening happen, how much is bank demand, very difficult to quantify, but clearly improving trends. We are seeing improving trends. I think the one difference I think you will need to keep in mind is this year definitely, as Santanu mentioned, the pace of the pickup uh, through June has been faster than last year. But you know, if you go back and remember, if you, if you look back at last year, the pickup was, uh, was gradual, but it was sustained for a longer period of time, which is why you saw quarter three last year, most of the companies, including Cromchill, had, uh, had, had really fantastic growth. So while the pickup is sharper this year, whether it will last as long will actually depend on things like, uh, you know, the, the, how the COVID thing pans out, do we have another wave, uh, the whole impact of how long the commodity cost will keep rising. So this is something which you need to keep in mind. So it makes the, the task of predicting any, you know, the, the, the kind of uh, pickup we'll have even more difficult than last year, actually. So, I'll turn back to the two. Thank you, gentlemen, all the best. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prashant Kutti from Sundaram Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, just uh, two things to my end. One is, uh, when you talk about the fans, growth has been higher than our actual ECD growth. Uh, what would be the other constituents which, have, which would have pulled it down? The... Within ECD, of course, the, the, the growth in pumps has been slower, and that's also got to do with one, while residential pumps has, has grown uh, you know, almost 25 to 27%, uh, the, the fact that the eastern region actually opened up slower, in fact, you know, our biggest market for pumps is actually east, and the fact that east was the second worst impacted region after the south, and the, and the lockdown started lifting only towards the later part of June. So that are actually, you know, the pumps growth has been lower than the growth in fans and appliances. And that has actually pulled down our ECD growth to that extent. Because, you know, in, in our case, the, the pumps also form a significant portion of our overall ECD uh, business. And just one more uh, point, uh, sorry to uh, uh, press back on the gross margin part of it. So like you said that, uh, that obviously the benefits of uh, commodity which is bring probably might play through in the coming quarters uh, if, if they, they kind of remain benign. Uh, but if I look at it, let's say the last quarter we see with the gross margin of about 30.7, they uh, to assume that that probably was the worst point because uh, we've actually seen a sequential improvement being so sharp. Uh, uh, there isn't any one-off in this uh, in this gross margin which is there, right? No, there is no one-off in this gross margin. Of course, the last quarter was, in fact, it's the quarter we have seen so far. The last quarter was the one where we had the the most uh, adverse impact of, uh, of gross, yeah. and gross margin. So there is no one-off in this, this quarter gross margin at all. And the two rounds of pricing increase, and you say, uh, what is the quantum of the pricing increase when you've taken the two rounds which, which you spoke in the, in the quarter, it is different per category, but on an average, you, you could say 5 to 6 percent on an average during the quarter. Because, as I mentioned, commodity cost went up 10 percent. Uh, and we still managed to hold our margins pretty much at a gross margin level. So, half of the recovery has been uh, from, from pricing alone, and the rest is from the combination of everything else. Sure, sure. Thank you so much. All the very best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Arora from Access Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, you you said you touched base that this is the right time to invest in the businesses, ad spend, you know, uh, no compromise being done, uh, taken on that. Uh, can we expect some new categories? Uh, you had touched base on this topic earlier as well, but you know, just to get a sense that uh, where we stand in terms of you know newer addition in categories, newer segments for Crompton, uh, are we are we almost? Uh, can we expect like in the second half there will be some new categories which will get launched? Uh, that's my first question. Uh, answer to your first question is yes. 
and uh, i don't know shanti you will answer this or not but there is a lot of uh, news uh, surrounding that crompton has acquired uh, tiska i mean it's just a news what keeps splashing on the channel uh, i know you would not like to comment on it uh, but uh, being a speculation and nothing press release on the exchange spy company but generally is that what the category we are looking at to grow or there is something else also we, we as mentioned earlier have consistently been looking at inorganic opportunities which meet our strategic goals we we continue to do that the opportunity has to be a strategic fit for us and we have to judge that there's a value creating opportunity for us those have been our benchmarks which we which we always apply and we will continue to apply in the future thank you shanti i'll come back in the queue for questions thank you thank you the next question is from the line of bharat shah from ask investment managers please go ahead <laughs> my uh, question is about uh, acquisition of cisca so two points there one uh, will it not be just a horizontal acquisition rather than adding verticality and new opportunity or a new line and to that extent uh, uh, it's it's uh less uh, uh so to say opportune than what it otherwise could have and secondly uh when the focus is on premiumization my perception is that cisco is a bit of a discount brand i could be wrong but that's my perception so how does that sit well with the strategy uh I'm afraid I don't know enough about Cisco and I can't really answer for competition in this call. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Adesh Mehta from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Uh, hello sir. Uh yeah. sir, uh, any thoughts about uh, you know solar pumps? business would you like to get into it you know can it be a scalable opportunity for you uh you know uh, obviously solar pumps in terms of market size is, is 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 pretty big i think you know and but but the biggest thing is the biggest part of solar or i would say it's almost exclusively solar plays a big part in uh, in agricultural pumps okay and you know uh, growing agricultural pumps and gaining share there is one of our key strategy areas key strategic areas So that is something we are working on, uh, you know, in 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 terms of improving our market share in agri. Now, solar pumps per se has got a lot of components of government subsidies and so on and so forth, which actually make the solar offering, uh, you know, uh, feasible. What we are working on is to try to make pumps that will make the you know the solar offering much more cost efficient, uh, because a more a more energy efficient pump would mean that the cost of the solar system would come down significantly. uh so so that is where we stand you know in terms of uh, we we want to try to make our pumps more energy efficient and that will make you know crompton as a brand a much bigger player in in partnering along with other players who are in the solar space i would say that's all i would like to leave it at this moment right sir and and sir would we be open to uh, you know participating in government tenders if need be if if the government tender is uh, you know something which we see as a good business opportunity of course we would be like we do for example today participate in government tenders in lighting yes yeah. we have in the past participated in government tenders in various states on pumps also yeah. so it's kind of almost uh, another channel in which we operate depending on the conditions of the particular tender thank you sir all the best thank you thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Charanjit Singh from DSP Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, first is like is each of the product categories which we operate in. If you can just highlight in terms of what's the proportion of economy uh, in each of those categories. You know, we had uh, certain good successes in the economy segment. 
and uh, based on that traction in the rural market and how do we see rural markets especially you know going forward for content consumers uh, that's my first question and second question is uh, on e-commerce as a channel uh, where we are and how we are seeing one is the pricing and traction from the e-commerce channel uh, going forward yeah, yeah uh, you know what we categorize as economy which is obviously the the lower end of the segments in both uh, i would say fans and in pumps it contributes roughly one uh, 20 to 25 percent of our total business uh, you know both in pumps and uh, in in, uh, in 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 fans in the other category we really don't have a classification of uh, of economy or, or you know uh, or similar classification so so i wouldn't be able to put a number for example in lighting or in, in appliances uh, of course e-commerce is one of our key growth uh, you know areas that we have identified uh, apart from my company also uh, have rural as another big area i know and you know let me let me answer the question on rural first you know when i say rural or urban we are primarily talking about towns between population of 10000 to 100000 i am not talking about the villages with population of less than 10000 so the our, our, our objective in, in the rural program is to is to is to make products available in those markets through to more of a controlled you know distribution approach rather than merely depend on wholesale like we have done before this is an initiative we have now been running for about 12 to 18 months we see good traction uh, we don't think at this moment that we need any significantly different portfolio assortments to be made available there we find good traction for our existing ranges i think the fact that crompton is a brand that straddles a, a, a big you know uh, straddles across price segments starting all the way from top economy actually means that we are able to get you know, good traction the moment we are able to make our products available in, in, in the rural areas. E-commerce you know, has, has been seeing good traction, we have been seeing good growth last year, and we continue to see strong, strong progress currently. We are working on various elements to ensure that we have at least similar market share on e-com like we have for, for the offline trade. Uh, of course, if you ask me, are we as strong in e-com today as we are in general trade? Not yet. But that is why we see that as a big opportunity area going forward. Yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please limit your questions to one per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, would request you to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Bhavan Vitlani from SBI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations for a good set of numbers. Uh, my question is on the palms. Uh, last quarter, same year, uh, you had mentioned in your presentation that the palms scaled back to 100% of activity. Uh, so the lower growth, is it because of the higher base uh, uh, that we saw uh, last year vis-a-vis -vis the other categories like fans in the ECD? The like like uh, as mentioned and Matthew had also mentioned, a key reason for the lower growth of pumps versus the rest of ECD is more because of the regional skew. The markets which were the slowest to open up in June were the east and south. Our pumps business has a relatively higher salience in the east. East is our most important pumps market. So because of the slower opening of the East this time around, the pumps business in June was relatively impacted. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankur Sharma from HDFC Standard Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Good morning and uh, thanks for your time. Uh, just trying to understand, uh, you know, the recovery, you know, this year versus last year, a little more detail uh, on the B2C versus the B2G side uh, of the business. So if I remember correctly, last year, again, you know, the B2C kind of uh, came back fairly strongly uh, post the lockdowns opened and then the B2G kind of lagged. Uh, how, how are the trends now, uh, you know, because what we also hear is that the B2G uh, was relatively less affected uh, in the second wave. Uh, the B2C first, uh, that trend is similar. And the B2C recovery trend is frankly similar to what it is in other categories also. The real difference is in what we broadly call the B2B. However, if you take the B2B, 
and you split it up as B to G, I business to government, specifically ESL, and B to B, I business to private industry. From COVID one, the B to G part has got significantly impacted and continues to be impacted. The B to B, I business to private, if you will does see a gradual recovery, but the ESL business and other government businesses are where the biggest impact is and continues to be. Anything to add, Matthew? No. Yep. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kayur Harish Pandya from ICICI Prudential Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, the question is on uh, the channel inventory. So how is the channel inventory uh, for most of the B2C products? That is one. And the ancillary question is uh, because of the just uh, fear of wave three of COVID, are we seeing say destocking or say very thin stocking by the channel? On on the first one, like like I mentioned earlier, one of the technology investments that we have made over the last couple of years is our tally data system, which gives us secondary sales, sales from our distributors to the retailers. Hmm. Now, therefore, now I we have hard data to answer your question, and the answer is there has been no significant change in the channel inventory over this period because we see primary sales and secondary sales month to month following the same trend. So of course primary sales came down in May, but secondary sales came down in almost a parallel line. So there is no significant change in channel inventory over this, over this uh, period. And the second question? Yeah. Huh? There was one more. Your, your second qu question was, I'm sorry, I've forgotten. So, uh, because of fear of third wave, are we seeing be stocking or say very less no. stocking okay. or come by the channel? We're not seeing any trend like that because, again, like I mentioned earlier, yeah. our data clearly indicates that now over June, as primary sales are going up, secondary sales are also going up in exactly the same uh, rate. The lines on the graph match. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Naval from MK Global Financial Services. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, two questions. First, on if I look at two-year basis, uh, both ECD and, and lighting has seen a decline. Uh, would you still attribute this to uh, region-specific issues, what you elaborated earlier? Or there was, uh, you know, category, uh, specific category which has uh, impacted uh, this uh, in a big way? So if you compare with two years, three years, obviously with the, with the fact that even in this quarter, you had almost 45 days of market shutdown of some extent. Uh, that has created obviously the fact that we are still lower than what we were two years ago. But as Shantanu mentioned, for if you, look at, if you look at June standalone, June 2021, the sales was higher than June 2019. Uh, yeah, of course, you know, the which categories and, you know, which, uh, you know, what are the kind of big differential growth is obviously got to do with two things. One, which markets open first and which markets open later. For example, this time South, you know, you know, was the worst impacted, followed by East. Uh, that makes a difference in terms of, and then depending on where we are strong with which products. The fact that, for example, East open late actually meant that we lost uh, more sales in pumps than, say, in appliances, where we are not as strong in the East. And for example, in South, the fact that markets remain shut actually would have compromised our growth in fans quite a bit, although we, already, although we have done well in fans in spite of that. So obviously, you know, they're depending on which market we're closing for how long, that has an impact on the category-wise growth. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rakesh Roy from Insect Securities and Finance. Please go ahead. Yeah, morning, sir. My first question regarding, uh, say any further uh, plan to increase the pri prices? Prices, uh, you know, of course, it got you know, you, like like Shantanu mentioned, we have taken uh, three rounds of price increases so far, three to four rounds, depending on the category of products, 
And, you know, in spite of the fact that these increases were much more than it has ever happened in, in the past, there has been reasonably good acceptance of these prices in the market, which is what resulted in June sales being pretty, pretty reasonably good. Uh, whether we will need to take prices, price increases in the future will actually depend a lot on how the commodities, uh, you know, commodities play up. Uh, while, you know, there has been uh, some, some stability to the commodity prices in the last uh, one month or so, uh, you know, it's very difficult to predict because, for example, uh, if you look at chips, the chip prices are shooting through the roof because also the availability issue of chips. Uh, while some other, for, for some other commodities uh, like copper, you know, you see there is, there is some reasonable stability in, in, in prices over the last one month or so. So it's very difficult to predict going forward which commodities will move in what direction and whether we will need to take a price increase will actually depend on how commodities move. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Achal Lohade from JM Financial Services. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question was uh, with respect to uh, the appliances uh, business uh, within the ECB. Can you help us uh, in terms of the mix from appliances in uh, FI21 and how do you see over next three years, you know, what kind of mix it could uh, reach uh, in terms of appliances within ECB? Uh, obviously, uh, you know, I can't comment in terms of uh, numbers, et cetera, on what we expect in the future. But suffice to say, as we've mentioned in terms of our overall business and strategic approach, we believe that any category which we participate in, we want to play to win. And for us, winning we de have defined as we need to become at least a number two player in that subcategory. The reason we have defined it as we need to be a number two player as opposed to a number six or number seven or number eight player is because in each subcategory, the value is captured by the leading market share players, not by the also rands. So obviously, the very fact that we focused on appliances is because we see an opportunity and we are on a journey to make sure that we do become number two in each of these sub-segments. A good example is the first sub-segment which we started working on uh, the Earth first, which is the Giza sub-segment, where we've had significant success and are not very far from becoming a number two in the category where most of the value is captured. And that would be our aspiration and our goal through a combination of branding, innovation, and go-to-market across all the appliances segments. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Latika Chopra from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, you know, you've talked a lot about, uh, you know, innovation and distribution, and I, I just wanted to check, uh, you know, if you could share, uh, uh, first of all, what is the rural and e-commerce revenue share in your mix today? Also, for the new launches that you've done, is there any kind of quantifiable metric in terms of the revenue contribution over the past one year, two year, how the new SKUs have moved in revenue mix? And also in terms of their reach, uh, you know, compared to fans or, maybe uh, versus where they were about a year or two years ago. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, as I, as I mentioned some time sometime back, uh, the rural plus, the, e the rural and e-commerce were two very important, uh, you know, areas of, of business for us to drive because obviously, as I mentioned before, uh, our, our current share in both these areas is, is, is definitely lower than overall national share. Uh, so if I look at rural plus e-com, you know, the, in, in the quarter that is just, uh, you know, quarter one, I would say nearly 9% of our total revenue is coming from uh, e-com plus rural. And that is up from 3 three to 4% for the same period last year. So I think the contribution of these channels to our overall business has, has, has almost doubled. Uh, in terms of innovation, we, we measure two things. One is what is the contribution of to sales of product launched in the last one year? and the product launched in the last three years. So just to give you some idea, the product launched in the last one year, today I contributes nearly 10% of our revenue, and product launched in the last three years contributes more than 50% of our revenue. So those are very two very important numbers. 10% of revenue from product launched in the last one year, and 50% from product launched in the last three years. Yeah. Thank you. 
The so next question is from the line of Sonali Salgaonkar from Jefferies India. Please go ahead. So thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so I have just one question. What could be our market shares across the categories that we are present in right now versus say about how it has evolved over the past two, three years? And uh, just also uh, our CAPEX outlays. So that's it from my side. Uh, yeah, on the market share, I will take, I will answer. Then I'll hand over Sandeep. Uh, on fans, we our market share is is around 26 to 27 percent. Uh, you know, this, this market share has been growing consistently. So if I take the last two year period, we must uh, no, two years ago this market share would have been 20 to 24 percent. So we have gained uh, significant market share on fans. On pumps, I would say residential pumps we are again market leaders. Market share around 27 to 28 percent. Again, similar kind of market share expansion in pumps like we have seen for uh, uh, for fans. On appliances, obviously, you know, it's, it's very different category-wise. Uh, we now have, I think, in diesel to our best estimate, market share of roughly 13%. We have moved there from being number six, number seven to number three, and close to getting to number two. Uh, air coolers, while we have been growing significantly, we are still in single-digit market share. Uh, in lighting, our market share is roughly around 10%. Again, there, you know, while, while near term we have had some struggles on lighting, I would say that our market share on fans, uh, on, uh, on lighting for three, four years back was roughly only 5%. So there has been significant market share improvement on, in all categories. So obviously, in fans and residential pumps, we are all, already market leaders. So that's how the market shares have moved in the last three to four years. On CapEx, I will ask the beat too. Yeah. So our, our CapEx uh, outgo this year is likely to be anywhere between 30 to 50 crores. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Siddhartha Bera from Namura. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. My question is again on the appliance side. Uh, basically, uh, first is what will be the mix from this business uh, for us in Q4 or last year? And second is, I mean, we have highlighted uh, we want to become number two. So some of these areas like mixer grinder, we have been now doing it. So by when can we expect that we can become number two or number three probably in the next uh, time going ahead? So, yeah. so the appliances mix it changes dramatically quarter on quarter because you know, our two leading categories in, in, uh, in appliances, which is today water heaters and air coolers, they're basically operating through different uh, seasons. Uh, so, so it's very difficult to actually, it uh, doesn't really make too much of sense looking at the mix between categories because every quarter it will change depending on you know, whether it's the winter, summer and so on and so forth. Uh, on water heaters, like I mentioned, we have, we, have, we have moved from being number six to number seven to being number three, very close to getting to number two. Because that's where the first action we took in appliances was on uh, was on uh, water heaters. The second one was we took was on the air coolers. Air coolers also we have more than doubled our market share in the last two years, while the market share is still in single digits. Mixer grinder journey only really started uh, in, in right earnest only about six to nine months ago, and we are still in very low single digit market share. So there's a long long way ahead of us before we can say that we are going to get into top three. So that's going to be taking some more time. Just, just for perspective, in water heaters, it has taken us about three to four years to get from uh, three to four percent share to get to 13, 13 percent. So you, we can estimate that similar kind of time frame it will take also in the other categories to get to top two, top three. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sri Nidhi Karlekar from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on decent set of numbers. Uh, sir, uh, based on your assessment, how are the pricing action that company has taken to offset commodity headwinds compared to company's key competitors, both in terms of quantum as well as timing of the price increases? And sir, second question is, uh, sir, Crompton has a relatively higher dependence on outsourced manufacturing versus some of its peers. So in that regard, uh, I just want to understand, does that factor help in any, in any way to contain the gross margins? Uh, because I would imagine price adjustment that we would take for a vendor would, would pass on with a lag. So just uh, your perspective on these two. Okay. Uh, on the first one, in terms of the pricing, quantum and timing, largely speaking, most of the industry moved roughly the same quantum at roughly the same time because the commodity pressure was uh, pretty much identical on everyone. So there was no significant differences. Second, uh, in terms of uh, outsource versus insource, 
not really much of a difference, okay? Because, you know, what we do, and that's one of the ways we got, uh, uh, we are helping manage is, we centrally negotiate prices for commodities, the major commodities, which is, is then at that prices, it, it is also bought by the vendors, our main vendors at least. And that enables them also to get it at uh, better prices based on our negotiated costs. So there's not a significant difference in uh, cross margins or bill of materials, if you will, between outsourced and uh, made in our own factories. Yeah, even the time lag is, is max difference is only maximum one month. Yeah. Because you know the yeah. we, we adjust every month the commodity costs in, in the cost sheet. So there is not a yeah. significant difference. Great sir. And just one uh, factual question if I may. So would it be possible to share our lighting business mix on a rolling four quarter basis between B two C, B two B and B two G? Uh, I would say B two C B two B plus B two G and B two C was would be only half off, you know. Uh, but again, you know, in every quarter it could shift because we have a large government order. You know, that quarter it could swing. But on a going basis, roughly 50-50 between B2C and B2B. Although in the last couple of quarters, it would have been slightly more towards B2C because of the fact that B2C has recovered faster. But otherwise, on a long-term basis, 50-50. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Ms. Renu Beth from IFL Securities Limited for closing comments. Uh, on behalf of IFL Securities, I would like to thank the management for giving us the opportunity to host the call um, and all the participants to be there. Um, and um, any closing comments from uh, Shantanu and the team would be welcome. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you, Renu. Thank you, everyone, for dialing in. As always, our objective is... Uh, to tell you everything we know so you can uh, have the best knowledge of our company and our thinking. If there are any questions, as always, which we were not able to get to during this call because of limitation of time, please feel free to contact us. We'd be more than happy to address any questions uh, you may have. Finally, of course, uh, please, uh, COVID is not over. Get vaccinated, get your second round of vaccinations, and stay safe and healthy, you and your families, and all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of IIFL Securities Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.